Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. All right, I'm back. And tonight is going to be an evening in the Diamond Bell Saloon. If you're not familiar with where I live, uh, I'm here in Durango, Colorado, which is the home of this unique Western saloon that has had ragtime piano players every year since it opened in 1957. And it's not a full-time job by any stretch of the imagination but I uh, have a wonderful part-time job there, and so I thought that would make a fun theme for tonight's concert, and uh, it allows me to answer a lot of requests and so forth, too. The, this saloon is in a beautiful Victorian hotel called the Strader Hotel, which was built in 1887. And that's a little bit of the history behind it, and I'll tell you more as we go along here. Just a second. Okay. Good, looks like everything's working. Well, I thought what I'd start with tonight uh, is a medley of tunes that are all from the 19th century, you know? Uh, it's almost a myth that ragtime was played in all the old western saloons and bars. And uh, because that period, like in the 1870s, 1880s, that predated ragtime by at least 10 or 15 years. So what I'm going to do here is take a bunch of these old tunes like Dixie and we're going to do My Old Kentucky Home by Stephen Foster and play them in a ragtime style. And uh, anyway, uh, this is something I picked up from, from Johnny Maddox, of course. So here's my Dixie medley to start things off tonight.
you so much. Okay. Uh, well, looks like I'm getting some funny requests here. No, I'm afraid I don't know any of those. I don't know what tunes you're talking about. Yeah, a hot time in the old town tonight. That tune was uh, the hit of the Spanish-American War in 1898. And uh, in case you didn't recognize some of the others, I included Carry Me Back to Old Virginia and Owe Them Golden Slippers, which was, uh, both were written by James A. Bland, who was known as the Black Stephen Foster. I love his music. I think it's kind of underplayed, underrepresented. Oh, how wonderful. I'm reading comments here from Bob on YouTube. He says a year ago they were at the Diamond Bell Saloon. Well, well, thanks for tuning in here tonight. And um, uh, I think I will try and do something next that is very special. Uh, and I have been working on this arrangement for many years. This, uh, this is an example, again, of music that you might have heard uh, in a real Western saloon in the 1800s, prior to when ragtime came about just before the turn of the 20th century. This is an old parlor song. Actually, goes all the way back to the 1860s. It's been a favorite of mine for years. It's called When You and I Were Young Maggie. And the most spectacular version of this tune was recorded on a hand-played piano roll by Blind Boone. And he goes through about four or five different variations on the tune. Uh, first, he plays it like a ballad, and then with all kinds of arpeggios and chromatic scales, and then he plays it in ragtime and finally attacks the piano at the end of the song. And I don't play it exactly the way he did. I'm throwing in a minor key variation as well. I've also done the When You and I Were Young Maggie blues, but this is the type of, of uh, music you might have actually heard back in the 1800s in the Victorian period when the Strader Hotel was built. So that's my, my thinking on it, uh, why it would be appropriate to play this now. So here's, here's a bit of the blind boon version of classic old ballad, When You and I Were Young Maggie.
you and I were young Maggie. Thank you, everybody. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. That's something a little different than what I usually do. And uh, it'd be a fun opener for the concert. I thought it would be. Well, uh, now let's see. I got a lot of requests ahead of time before tonight's concert, which are uh, very doable. It has to be something I know by heart when I ask for requests. And um, one of them was a classic rag. So I think we should move on to the real rag time now. And this came from Harold Hanlon in um, Australia. And he wanted to hear Scott Joplin's pineapple rag. So let me do that next for you. This came out in 1908 after Joplin had left Missouri and moved to New York. folks. Looks like a lot of my regulars are tuning in tonight. Thanks so much for, for listening, especially on the 3rd of July. 
Uh, in other countries, it may already be the 4th, but here in America, we celebrate our Independence Day on the 4th of July. And, of course, I will uh, uh, play some patriotic tunes, but I'll save it for the very end of the concert, the grand finale. So you have to stick around and listen. And uh, if you're just listening for the first time, I hope I'm getting some new listeners once in a while. Uh, I do accept virtual tips for these concerts. I usually make an announcement about now. You can send it in on PayPal or Venmo. Uh, the information is in the postings. And for people who don't trust PayPal, I have a, pay a P.O. box on my website as well. Um, got a request for a Max Marath tune. Sure, uh, Karen, I'll do that later. A uh, gold bar rag. You're, we're all thinking of Max right now. I understand he's been moved into hospice, which doesn't sound great. Uh, I'm not 100% sure. Maybe it's uh, just an assisted living facility, but I heard it's hospice. So, um, hey Sue, I'm oh I'm glad you got to hear pineapple rag. Hope uh, hope Howard's doing all right. Let me check both streams here. Frog legs rag, yeah. Yes, St. Louis rag, I know that. Tickled to death, I know that. Uh, you know, um, I've already gotten so many requests for tonight that there's no way I'll be able to fit them all in. I tried to write down some of the ones that I got ahead of time. Uh, and one of them came from a uh, good friend that uh, lives in Sacramento, Jack Kirsch. And I thought I'd do this because I haven't played it in a while. We're going to do the Tabasco Ragtime Waltz. I like to throw in a true ragtime waltz once in a while. And this was written by the wonderful Charles L. Johnson from Kansas City, the man that wrote Dill Pickle's Rag. And uh, this uh, fits in with my Diamond Bill theme. When I first started working in the saloon, I was 14 years old, and Johnny Maddox was working there. I would play the cocktail hour, and then Johnny would play the rest of the night. And he told me about this waltz called Tabasco, and he wrote an introduction for it. There, there is not one in the original music. But I can remember the whole introduction. Johnny sat down in the saloon one night and showed it to me, this part that he wrote. And uh, I can still play it uh, from when uh, he first showed it to me when I was 14. So let's do the Tabasco Ragtime Waltz, complete with this original introduction by Charles L. Johnson.
and that's Tabasco. Thank you, folks. Oh, well, hello there to Roger and Maine. I see Bob in California. Oh, got a good number of people watching here on YouTube now. Uh, if you don't mind, hit the like button. I know it seems kind of silly, but it does help with the social media algorithms. And uh, please share these concerts if you know of anyone you think might like this type of music. I really would appreciate that. Um, one of the requests I got ahead of time was for a tune that I haven't played in a while, so I thought I would dig out the music. Here's the original copy of the sheet music. It's one of those happy ragtime era tunes that were written by songwriters in Tin Pen Alley about the sunny south. This is When the Sun Goes Down in Dixie and the Moon Begins to Rise. Came out in 1917. Music by Albert von Tilzer, same man that wrote Take Me Out to the Ball Game. And uh, I recorded this on a CD with Danny Coots on drums. Unfortunately, that CD is sold out. But uh, this, this is for uh, Nick Larson from Wisconsin. He asked me to play this, and I thought, you know, this would be great. I haven't done this in a while. When the sun goes down in Dixie. sun goes down in Dixie and the moon begins to rise. <laughs> I won't tell you the name that Dan came up for that song. Hey Nick, I'm glad you're listening. Oh, and uh, greetings there to Gustavo in Brazil. It's nice to have you back back with us. I, yeah, the piano sounds wonderful this week. I, I don't, I'm not sure if I should mention it or not, but one of my regular listeners, Dave Goodlaxon, is a professional piano technician. He happened to come through Durango this week uh, on a road trip to listen to me play in the Diamond Bell and Dave gave me the gift of a beautiful piano tuning this week. I hardly think this piano has ever sounded better. All the unisons and so forth are just perfect right now. Um, well, uh, you know, in the spirit of 
working in a saloon or a bar like that as a musician, the glamorous life of a professional piano player, um, one of the things I always try and do is to learn a whole lot of, of new repertoire. That's one of the things that still uh, I find challenging and exciting as a musician is to learn a lot of new songs I've never played. So here's a couple of them I pulled out this week. Here's an old vaudeville tune by Irving Berlin, who of course was one of the greatest ragtime writers, even if people don't think about him in that regard today. This is a tune called The Old Maid's Ball. Look, it even has a great cover on the sheet music, and it's very funny. I'll, I've got to read you some of the words. Well, I know it by heart. Uh, there were old maids short and tall, dancing round the hall. One who knew us, drew up to us. She was older than St. Louis. Miss Melinda Rand led the female band. Uh, when they played, here comes the bride. Four old maids sat down and cried. Someone hollered, there's a man outside. It broke up the old maid's ball. <laughs> and then the second chorus, uh, one old maid named Geraldine, oldest maid I've ever seen, said tomorrow I'll be 17 and broke up the old maid's ball. So here it is, complete with the verse. <laughs> What other requests do I have, folks? Maybe I'll stop and play a request next and then try and get in a few of the other songs I planned ahead of time. Oh, got a request here for Teddy Bear's Picnic on YouTube. Uh, that would be a great tune to do. In fact, I recorded this on the album that I did live at the Diamond Bell. For a long time, I never thought I would like doing a live album. Every note is not perfect, but when I finally decided to hire a recording engineer to come in the saloon, I was really very happy with the results. There's something about the, the feeling of the music that is just uh, great, that is often missing from studio albums. A number of the CDs that I recorded in the past were done in my parents' living room, and that environment just does not foster the kind of music that I, I love the best. And so um, let's do the Teddy Bears Picnic. This is a very popular march. Uh, written in about 1907, I believe, by a man named John W. Bratton. And it's a very recognizable melody. Uh, I learned it after hearing some of the other piano players at the Diamond Bell do it. Some of the very best ones they've had in that saloon were Dick Kreckel, Terry Hartzell, and of course, Johnny Maddox. Terry Hartzell just came in to play this 
the next two weeks. I saw Terry last night. He's a pianist from the New York area. He's played in piano bars for decades. And like I say, it's only a part-time job for me. But um, it's, it's very fun. I feel lucky to get to do it. And uh, this is one of the tunes that I learned from those guys, the Teddy Bears Picnic. so much. <clears throat> that request came from Ice Cream Van Chime Videos on YouTube. What an interesting name. <laughs> you know, that's uh, part of why doing things virtually is, is a lot of fun. There's a couple of the handles there on YouTube. I, I know who they really are, even though they're funny names. <laughs> All right, so what else is on the list? Well, maybe I'll do a, a blues tune next. This is another one that I just felt like learning this week. And um, I pulled out the original sheet music. This has a very interesting cover on it. This is called the Tin Roof Blues. It's a classic of the early jazz era. And on the cover, you can see a depiction of uh, the Tin Roof Cafe in New Orleans, for which it was named. And uh, the names of all the New Orleans rhythm kings who wrote the tune are in a circle around the cover of the music. Isn't that kind of neat? So this was written by the New Orleans rhythm kings, 1923, uh, words by Walter Melrose of the Melrose Brothers Music Publishing Company in Chicago. They were primarily known for uh, publishing Jelly Roll Morton's music, I think. But uh, anyhow, let's do the Tin Roof Blues.
you so much, Tin Roof Blues. That's one of the first times I've ever performed that, but I think it's just a great tune. <sighs> Rules and regulations at the Tin Roof Cafe. Dance with your feet. No shimmy dancing. Hold your wiggle. <laughs> it's on the cover of the music. <sighs> well, what else would we like to hear? Um, I've got a few more. I planned ahead of time, of course. Yeah, I'm afraid I'd have to see the sheet music to play Happy Little Mose. And the same is true of Stumbling. I'm sorry, I, I got some requests for that. I'd have to see the sheet music. I won't be able to get to that tonight. Um, I, I think I got a request for 12th Street Rag. I, that's something I have to play at the Diamond Bell all the time, so it would be appropriate to play that tonight. Um, any other requests? I'm going to wait just a second because it takes a minute for, for the chat to come through sometimes on YouTube and, and Facebook. Oh, got a request from Gustavo for uh, Gin Mill Blues. I might play that. Uh, let me do something up-tempo, and then we'll do another blues tune. Let's, let's do it that way. I'll do the 12th Street Rag. I forget who requested that. It's on my list over here. <laughs> and then we'll do the Gin Mill Blues. friend, uh, a listener at the saloon that uh, she's 86 years old and she dances to that tune, just wiggles her hips and it drives the entire saloon crazy. They love it. It's, it's something else. I think I saw a request for, was it when the midnight choo-choo leaves for Alabama? Yeah. Uh, who asked for that? Oh, Bill, Bill Huffman. Okay. Yeah, I might play that. Um, 
Let me do the blues first, and then we'll do that. Of course, I, I've known that song for years. A wonderful tune, and I, I play it a lot. But let's do this blues tune, which I learned this. I finally sat down and tried to learn it about six months ago or a year ago, and uh, I've kind of had to learn it partly by ear because there's so many different versions of it. But I just love this, especially the Naki Parker recordings of this. He played this throughout his career, even early on with the Light Crust Doughboys. But the tune is actually written by a West Coast jazz pianist named Joe Sullivan. We're going to the early 1930s now. This is the Gin Mill Blues. <laughs> everybody. Uh, let's see, what else is on the list? Oh, well, I'd almost forgotten what was next. We're going to do When the Midnight Choo Choo Leaves for Alabama. You know, the two things about this town where I live that are, are national landmarks are the Diamond Bell Saloon and the Durango and Silverton Railroad. So it's, it's very much a, a railroad town and I get a little sick of playing Chattanooga Choo Choo. I apologize for saying that, uh, but I'm thrilled to get a request for another train song. This one written in 1912 by Irving Berlin. Such famous performers as Judy Garland and Fred Astaire have done this. They did it in the movie Easter Parade, but here's my arrangement of it. When the Midnight Choo Choo Leaves for Alabama. <laughs>
choo-choo leaves for Alabama. I wish I had my train whistle out tonight. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah, another choo-choo song, Wabash Cannibal. Yeah, unfortunately, Home When Shadows Fall. I love that song. I wish I could play it for you. Uh, I'd have to see the sheet music for that. Uh, I should commit it to memory. I love that. It's a tune from the early 30s. They just really wrote the most wonderful melodies in the 20s and 30s. Those are my favorite two decades. Uh, I love the earlier ragtime as well, but especially the 20s and 30s. And uh, the, the quality of the melodies has never been quite the same since in American popular music. And uh, speaking of tunes from the early 30s that I love, I thought I'd do one tonight that I hadn't done in a while. I got a request for this, and it's called The Cop on the Beat, The Man in the Moon, and Me. And when I play it in the Diamond Bell, sometimes I do it as a medley with uh, another tune from the mid-30s, a beautiful ballad called Until the Real Thing Comes Along. Uh, the words to the tune are, if that isn't love, it'll have to do until the real thing comes along. So uh, here's a couple of these type of tunes for you, starting with The Cop on the Beat. <laughs>
Thank you very much. The cop on the beat, the man in the moon and me. One of those great tunes of the early 30s. I, I know Dave Goodlexon is listening right now. Um, someone on YouTube says the piano was just recently tuned by a master piano tuner. Yes, that is obviously true. It sounds pretty great, doesn't it? I, just in case you didn't hear me, Dave, I was just thanking you publicly. Um, okay, well, uh, yeah, about this time in the concert, I, I like to make a second announcement. I do accept virtual tips for these concerts. You can send it a tip, a tip on PayPal and Venmo, just like you would uh, in person. And um, I really appreciate that very much. Even though COVID has kind of waned, these concerts have been very helpful to my whole career. And it certainly helped me get through the last two years. So I appreciate that. Um, what else would we like to hear, folks? I'm going to have plenty of time for a couple of more requests tonight. Uh, I'm playing the patriotic songs at the end of the concert. Let me know what else you'd like to hear. Maybe this is just on my screen, but it looks like there's only one or two people have clicked the like button on Facebook. If you would do that, it helps with the algorithms. I really appreciate that. Um, doesn't take long, and we got over 40 people watching there. Glad Rag Doll. You know, I might play that, Gustavo. Maybe I should. St. Louis Rag. Oh, let's do let's do St. Louis Rag next, and then maybe I'll do another ballad. We'll do Glad Rag Doll. Um, yeah, St. Louis Rag by Tom Turpin who is now known as the father of St. Louis Ragtime. Uh, I love this. Uh, sometimes I will use this as an opening tune. It's also on the Diamond Bell CD that I did. So it's fitting to do tonight. It's written for the St. Louis World Fair in 1903. St. Louis Rag. <laughs> Joplin Festival, so I'm enjoying your concert. Well, thank you so much. Um, 
Let me check the requests here real quick. I might do Glad Rag Doll next. Oh, and uh, Bill says there's a bunch of, of yeah, oh, there's nearly 50 likes on Facebook. I just had to refresh my page. I guess that's what it was. Fantastic. Yes, I'm going to do Royal Garden Blues. Just hold on a minute. <laughs> um, okay, what, let's, uh, well, I think it'd be appropriate to do a ballad next. So let's do Glad Rag Doll. And this is a tune that I have played over and over in the Diamond Bell for one of my fans that loves to, to come in there and listen to the music. It's a ballad that was written in 1929, and it was used in a movie with a famous old actress named Dolores Costello. Sadly, the movie has been lost, called Glad Rag Doll. And uh, with it, sometimes I play it as a medley with a couple of other different songs. One of them is uh, one from the mid-30s called Tormented. And, uh, oh, thanks, Jake. <laughs> uh, I see that. Uh, we'll do either Tormented or Moon Glow. The tunes are kind of similar. I think I'll do Tormented tonight. Thank you. 
Mad Rag Doll. Thank you so much, folks. Gustavo, I'm so glad you like that as much as I do. That song has been recorded by a lot of different performers over the years. Johnny Ray, one of the pop singers in the 50s, did it, and so did Johnny Maddox, the piano player on Dodd Records. So, uh, well, I promised a couple of friends before I even started the concert tonight that I would play an early jazz tune that is really a showstopper. This is called the Royal Garden Blues, uh, written in 1919. It was named for a nightclub in Chicago, but it was written by two of the great uh, songwriters from New Orleans, Spencer Williams and Clarence Williams, who were not, not related to each other. And uh, this version is available on Jazzipation piano rolls, at least as soon as Domingo uh, has some more stock uh, piano rolls cut. Anyhow, <laughs> uh, this goes out to Marilyn and Bill, two of my good friends in uh, West Virginia, who have been very supportive of, of my virtual concert. So here's Royal Garden Blues. <laughs> time. Well, I'm so glad you guys. <laughs> hey, Adam, can you still play Canadian Capers? Yeah, that's one I can do. Uh, I wouldn't mind playing that for you, so let me know if there's any other requests coming in here real quick. I might add Canadian Capers to the program, and then... Uh, Give me one or two more songs and it'll be almost time to get to the patriotic portion of the program since tomorrow is the 4th of July, of course. Um, I don't see anything else yet. Canadian Capers is not a bad choice. Let's go ahead and do it. Um, this is a, this, I, I don't know why it's called Canadian Capers because this piece of music was written on the Barbary Coast in San Francisco 
which was the kind of like Storyville district in New, or New Orleans. It was the red light district had apparently dozens upon dozens of saloons and bars within just a few blocks. And a, pianist, a black pianist named Sid Leprati wrote this and it was stolen and published in, in uh, either New York or Chicago and about three different songwriters put their name on it. Anyhow, the, this is my arrangement of Canadian capers which includes a few licks from the famous recording of this that was done on Capitol Records by Ray Turner in the 1950s. He was an extremely virtuoso pianist who did a lot of work for movies and so forth. Canadian capers. videos of that on YouTube, not my videos, someone else took the video of me playing the tune, is one of the more popular ones. I get a lot of requests for that, I'm not quite sure why. I see a request for, let's see, Alexander's Ragtime Band is the latest one. I could do that, I certainly have time before I close the concert tonight. Oh yeah. Uh, carbolic acid rag, I could do that too. Um, let's do Alexander's Ragtime Band next because that's a very familiar tune, the type of thing that I would play in the saloon pretty often. 
and uh, sometimes I do a bunch of other songs with it uh, like I do in my Dixie medley, but because I've done that separately, what I'll do is just throw in the Swanee River played in ragtime too. The words to the tune are, if you want to hear the Swanee River played in ragtime, come on in here, come on in here, Alexander's Ragtime Band. So we'll, we'll do that uh, exactly like Irving Berlin intended. No, maybe not. Uh, this is a pretty up-tempo arrangement of the tune, not, more like a piano player would have done in vaudeville. It's not for sing-along, let, let's say that for sure. Alexander's Ragtime Band. saw something on my uh, list over here that I meant to play. I haven't gotten around to it yet. I, I think it would be appropriate. Uh, I've talked a little bit about how you have to learn a lot of different rep repertoire if you're going to play at a bar or a restaurant or hotel or something like that. And so you can't play one rag after, a next, after the next. Even in the ragtime era, the greatest of the ragtime pianists did not play that way, of course. So uh, I've had to learn s a c somewhat newer songs. You can get up into the 50s and 60s, and you know there's a number of tunes that have good melodies from that period that I can play in my own uh, piano style. And so here's a couple of them, and they're kind of special because they're both from movies that were filmed, at least in part, here in Durango. Uh, something like 20 or 30 movies have been made here over the years, uh, largely westerns, I'm sure. And so we're going to do... Um, let's see, uh, first, Around the World, from Around the World in 80 Days, a uh, famous ballad of the 50s, and then we'll follow that right up with Raindrops Keep Falling on My Head, which was uh, written for Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, 
which uh, part of that movie was filmed, you know, just, oh, probably eight, eight or ten miles from where I'm sitting right now. Anyway, uh, so here's two songs that are from movies made here in Durango. They're very popular tunes in the Diamond Bell, so I made a medley out of both of them.
Thank you so much. Raindrops keep falling on my head. It's one of the newer tunes in my repertory. I just remembered something I forgot to do, so I've got to add this in the uh, program right now in honor of Max Morath. This re request comes came from uh, Fred and Karen Yunkins earlier in the concert. I'm going to do one of the rags that Max wrote. He's one of my favorite of the more contemporary ragtime composers, actually. And Max wrote this early in his career in the 50s when he was playing at the Gold Bar Room, the Imperial Hotel in uh, Cripple Creek, Colorado. We're going to do the Gold Bar Rag. Here it comes. And then the patriotic stuff. so much folks glad I, glad I could squeeze that in tonight well it's time for the patriotic portion of tonight's program and I'm going to do my big medley of George M. Cohan songs for you first uh, I've, I've done this at least once or twice on previous broadcasts but probably not in a year so uh, let's do the George M. Cohan songs he was the only songwriter that was ever given a congressional gold medal it's not quite a Congressional Medal of Honor. I finally looked it up. It was a Congressional Gold Medal, which FDR gave to him not long before he died in about 1940. And um, uh, you should know most of these songs. The Yankee Doodle Boy, uh, which is the original title of Yankee Doodle Dandy. Everyone knows it by that because of the movie. Uh, then we'll do Mary's a Grand Old Name, Give My Regards to Broadway, uh, Harrigan, one of his uh, sort of Irish-American tunes, Over There from World War I, and Two Waltzes, which might be a little bit less familiar to you, and uh, those are Little Nellie Kelly, I Love You, and 45 Minutes from Broadway, and then we'll wind up the whole medley with Your Grand Old Flag. Here goes! <laughs> Thank you. 
my George M. Cohan medley. Thank you, folks. Oh, look like the stream almost cut out here for a second on my end. Right at the end of the uh, song. Isn't that annoying when that happens? Oh, well. <laughs> if you want to hear just how much fun we have in the Diamond Bell, you can go to my website and get the two CD set that I recorded live at the Diamond Bell Saloon. You can get all my CDs directly from me. That's the best way to do it. And um, before I close for the night, uh, John Philip Sousa's star as ragtime music was coming on. And this is the most famous march probably uh, ever written in history. And I do it complete with the piccolo part. And, and then uh, um, on the very last time through the trio, I do it in ragtime. So here's Stars and Stripes Forever. Maybe the fireworks are, are cutting into my stream here. Who knows? <laughs> Stars and Stripes Forever, my own arrangement of it. Thanks so much for listening tonight, folks, and I hope you have a happy 4th of July, if you're in the United States, and elsewhere as well. And um, thank you so much for sending in those virtual tips. I'm very grateful. I'm sure I will be back uh, next week with another concert. I'm not 100% sure. I may have to skip one or two in July, but I will announce it ahead of time on Facebook as I always do. Thanks again for listening tonight, folks. Good night for now.